Welcome back to Management Decision Tools. In this session, we will explore the topic on forecasting, uh, something that allows us to tell about the future of a business variable. For example, the variable of measurement could be our revenue, our profits, bank interest rates, um, fluctuation in prices, customer demands of our products, and uh, such quantities about the future, oftentimes, is a very decisive factor in uh, whether you win the competition or not, in whether you make profits, make money, and in some sense, uh, whether you survive in your business. So knowing the future in a way, uh, maybe in an extreme way, uh, determines our ability to survive. But having said that, no one really knows the future, isn't it? Yeah. So that that sounds like a very... Uh, important fact to take into consideration when we discuss this topic. We, we have to uh, make sure we are clear about this logic here. Now, given that no one knows the future, and we are talking about predicting the future, how do we reconcile this? Are we just wasting time talking about something that is not really going to be uh, applicable except for academic exercise and for exam purposes? Or is it something that is really of practical importance? And the answer to that question is both yes and no. And why? Because yes, nobody knows the future in absolute sense. And more importantly, nobody knows about the everything, all variables, all um, quantities about a business variable into the future, far into the future. Having said that, it is possible uh, to a large degree, pretty accurately, uh, to estimate a business quantity, some of those numbers that I mentioned, revenue, profits, interest rates, costs, demands, a uh, little bit into the future, not too far into the future. So, so long as we stay close to the present and not too far into the future, estimates of those quantities tend to be uh, roughly right, right, roughly right. There's some error tolerance that we will also have to uh, be talking about, right? But uh, to a large degree, it is quite a good approximation. And between not knowing anything at all and a pretty good estimation, I think we will choose the latter. Yeah? And the latter, the precise estimated quantity, is going to be uh, returned to us through one of these methods. Right? Uh, of course, there are a lot more, but today we will explore uh, essentially time series analysis. And then we will touch a little bit on another way of looking at uh, data sets uh, through statistical analysis. Okay, so that will be brief treatment. M main focus today is on time series analysis. So idea about forecasting, uh, knowing a little bit about the future, right? So make an estimate about the future. And the logic behind that is this. Think about a person standing there. Now, if I ask you to forecast, where will this person be? If the person were to take one step of a jump, all right, what would you do, right? Because uh, what you do is you end up concluding that it'll be a circle around his current position, yeah. Because he can choose to be uh, jumping in one step any direction, and uh, maybe he's strong, maybe he's weak, but it's around there, right? So it'll be a circle about one step away from him. And to the extent that uh, most people has the, will have the same stride, right? Uh, we will be quite accurate in having that knowledge. And because we are on Earth, we know a little bit about gravity. Uh, the person is not going to jump too far away from his present location. So, so you can draw a circle and pretty much that's quite a good estimate, although you are not precisely sure where, which location he'll be at along the circle, right? But suppose if I ask, can you forecast his location 10 steps away from his current location? Now that would be tough, right? That would be really difficult because after one step, he could have another circle around him. After another step, he could have another circle around him. And then end up, you might just draw a really large circle. But that means that, that the area within that circle is, is the entire possibility of where he might be. And you are no wiser than before, isn't it? It's like everywhere is possible. So, uh, so long as we stick to close to the uh, present, the future, the part of the future that is close to the present, then we are 
uh, at least making sense when we perform forecasting. Okay, so the idea about forecasting uh, then boils down to how do we crunch the numbers and the way to do it uh, in, in a way that is quite popular and uh, widely used is to look at time series all right and before we even talk about time series let's appreciate the way uh, data patterns can behave and what do we mean by that uh, by data patterns what we mean is that we look at data the fluctuations of data in terms of uh, these uh, categories so when we say when we say horizontal all right when we say horizontal what we mean is that the data is uh, looking like this okay so the sequence of data that we receive uh, is more or less uh, going across our chart it's horizontal in nature and let me just um, bring this up okay and uh, let's see if it works so so for for data that kind of crawls across the horizontal line the horizontal axis we kind of categorize it as horizontal now for horizontal data the sense of averaging uh, comes in in, in other words we we can um, in a visual way and also abstractly uh, think about this average line right so when we talk about averaging methods uh, in a while this this sense of averaging all the vertical heights of the data uh, makes sense because we, we know that the data is going to hover around some sort of invisible average uh, reference level and then we come to trend okay so well, let's draw the trend and then we can contrast the two so when it comes to trend again we have the x and y axis our data will be more like exhibiting a sustained kind of crawl whether it's upwards or downwards of course there may be uh, dips and, and, and uh, bumps uh, but essentially we can see that it is you know making effort to, to do some kind of climbing now the question is this when we see this why can't we also say that there is some sort of averaging and a line across Right. So now that we have these two graphs on, on screen, we can then think about uh, contrasting the two. So the idea is the, the treatment about uh, data jumps like this. Okay? So it, it goes from low to high and data drops like this when it goes from high to low. When it goes from low to high or high to low. So when it goes from low to high, is that going to be a sustained rise? In other words, do we think about the data as having achieved a new level and it will continue to rise from there? Is that, is that the case? We don't know. We don't know, right? Or when it exhibits a drop, are we now concluding that it is the beginning of a downward trend? Yeah, okay. So that is our attitude towards the data, something that we have to um, make a stand before we do forecasting. All right, so when we think about or we take up the attitude about the data into the future as being horizontal then in some sense um, fluctuations in data what goes up must come down all right so we can even write it here what uh, goes up must come down right so that is that is our belief when we take the posture the stand a priori that is before we do forecasting we take the stand that uh, I think uh, this data stream will be horizontal now why do we say that quick example right stock market most people will even if you haven't bought and sold uh, stocks through the stock market you have heard of it and you know stock prices they go up and down right so suppose we know this counter and it is you know there are fluctuations but it's not really having 
any um, sustained growth or decline, then we know that the price is just you know moving, crawling horizontally with some fluctuations. So knowing that is the situation for the company, for the stock, uh, do we take a posture that nah, I think that stock counter is mostly you know horizontal? Can we say that? Yeah, okay, it's not too far-fetched for us because we do have this kind of invisible knowledge about how the data uh, might behave even though we do not know the the point in point to point uh, values right so if we take up the posture that this stock price is going to be horizontal then our belief our implicit belief is that when prices go up and because there's an average to maintain right at some point in the future it has to come down so that the average line is maintained okay yeah so that's the main um, I won't say philosophical, but that's the main assumption that we hold up front. Can we be wrong about that assertion? Yes, but that is what we uh, assume right right up front before we even do forecasting or select the algorithms of forecasting to do our number crunching. Okay, keep that in mind. But when it comes to trend, then even if the rise is of the same magnitude, say this is plus five units, this is plus five units, right? Our belief is that, well, for this company, right, which I label trend, right, uh, this company is a startup, it's a growth company, and we think that, yeah, there may be short-term fluctuations, but in the long run, it's rising, it's going up, right? So if we have that um, external information, external in the sense that it is outside the, the number crunching algorithms and the formulas, if we have that external information and we treat this uprise in the data here as sustained in other words we don't expect it to come down yeah then it will not be right to take up some sort of averaging methods which built into the formula is the assumption that whatever goes up must come down yeah so here in this case we'll have to choose another algorithm possibly treating or respecting that when it goes up uh, it might come down a little bit, there might be a bit of a dip, but the algorithm must not have uh, implicit mechanism for or taking any uh, increase in data example uh, to be followed by some sort of a drop in the data value in the future. It should not have that. Okay, And it should respect that it is a new level, new reference level, on top of which it will still continue to achieve higher and higher level in that sense. So the treatment and the forecasting uh, method and the formula will be different because of our, our posture, our uh, upfront uh, attitude about the data, right? So uh, we can just, as a contrast, right, just phrase it in this way, uh, what goes up stays up, right? So there's no need for the data to be in the future dropping down so as to maintain some sort of an invisible average level okay so that's the essential difference between the two we'll have more to say about the formulas involved in uh, number crunching calculating for data that is horizontal versus data that is having a trend okay so that's uh, the main difference so we'll primarily be